you know, on these flight school uh, office hours calls, what would you say, Tari? We, we talk more about marketing than anything else, I would think, on those calls. Absolutely. I'd say 80, 85 percent marketing. Yeah. And it's well, and here's the cool thing. And I might go off on a soapbox here for a minute, but uh oh, uh oh, the cocktail for this. <laughs> no, right. I'm just soapbox time. In, in, fl in flight school, in week 12 of flight school, yeah. there are people having success, which is really cool. But then there are people in the class who they all have a property, which is pretty awesome because that's built into the class. Like you already have a property in your inventory, multiple properties in your inventory, but they may be feeling a little bit of pressure because they haven't sold the property. But here's what, here's what I like to emphasize to people. Like just remember that three months ago, before you went into flight school, you did not own any property and you did not own any property at 25 cents on the dollar. So think about what you've done, whether it's one property, three properties, five properties, you have something in your asset column now that you purchase for 25 cents on the dollar and whether it's 30 days from now or six months from now or a year from now, you will sell that thing and you will make a significant amount of money on that thing. So I just, it was, I was trying to encourage people tonight because I think there were some people on the call who maybe they were feeling, oh, I haven't had a sale yet, but listen, yeah, you haven't had a sale yet, but you just picked up, you, you invested you have an investment in your asset column that will return a significant amount of money to you. And that's a win. Like Absolutely. that's a win right there. So you got to remember that. Yeah. You know, they're, they're already actually very good at marketing. Once they stop buying properties, they just don't realize it because that's what they're doing. The same process there. It's really marketing and marketing as Mark <laughs> marketing, marketing as Mark has said before. Uh, that's a little tongue twister. I mean, you, you send a bunch of uh, letters out and you buy a property. So um, if you sent out, we said this last week, if you sent out five or 10 letters and you're like, I'm not buying a property, I can't figure out what's going on. Well, it's pretty obvious you sent out five or 10 letters. So it's the same thing on the advertising. I think that people just have to look at it the same way. You're already good at it. You sent out a lot of letters and you bought land. Now it's time to send out a lot of advertising so you can sell it. That's good. I, I use our kind of case study. Landon and I, like we, we struggled after flight school. We were, we thought we were marketing well. We thought we were marketing well. It wasn't until we got into coaching where we got our first terms deal. So it was six, seven months, maybe seven months, Land, seven months before we ever had a sale, a term sale. So even if it does start off slow, like you're just building the machine, it eventually it comes around if you stay the course. You do have those forches of the world where, you know, they get in and in two weeks later, you know, their passive is like $8,000 a month. <laughs> That's not the norm, right? That that definitely wasn't our case, but we, we stayed the course. Yeah. Didn't quit. That's all right. Do. And it's so difficult. Um, I think especially when you're in a flight school class and you see other people uh, doing sales and that whole comparison um, thing yes. it can really drive you crazy. But listen, the business works. What timeline it's going to work on for you. There's so many factors involved, um, you know, and just have to believe that it's going to and keep pursuing it. Um, as Matt Forbes always said, as long as you don't quit, you're going to get it right. As long as you stay consistent and keep executing. But to compare yourself, man, that's a, that's a, that's a, that's a bad thing to start getting in the habit of doing. It's terrible. We were happy for everyone selling around us in a yeah. haterish kind of way, but we we were happy for <laughs> them. We wished it were it was us. So we great. Happy for <laughs> you are a tremendous liar. I mean, that was uh, really well done. <laughs> we were happy for our peers uh, and our friends. Now they're our friends, but. Yeah. Yeah, we were like, what are we doing wrong? We were but the same way. We Our path took forever. Yeah. Forever. Mm -hmm. And it just, that was just the way it went for us. Um, but, I mean, in the end, it works. It always works. It works 100% of the time. It never fails. If you put the effort in and you just keep going, like, eventually you'll figure it out. So, I'm with you. You know, we, I, I kind of feel, in a way, I feel bad for the people who are like, yeah, I bought a property. Park. Yeah, I sold it. This is the greatest thing ever. One plus one is two. It's so easy. 
And you're like, yeah, you're going to need to fail just just a little bit. I mean, just yeah. for the kids at home, right? Just like you're going to hit hard times. Are you going to still stick with it? Like, yeah. You know, you know those people. I mean, you've seen them. I've seen them. Hey, I bought a property on Monday. Sold it Monday afternoon. What'd you do? I put one bad ad on Craigslist one time. Sold yep. it. I figured this out. I'm good to go. I feel bad for them because they don't understand the pain that it takes to figure this stuff out and get going, right? Especially without, you know, coaching and certainly without flight school. Like my hat's off to anybody who can go do it with the toolkit or we, we actually talked to you ready for this. Bosma, I didn't tell you this and talked to a seller today who figured out the terms business on his own. Literally started buying stuff at auction on the side. He's been doing it for 10 years. And um, he sells it on basically on on terms, right? Right. And uh, and, and I'm like, wow. I'm like, and this is that's kind of a cool conversation, right? I'm like, you totally wasted 20 minutes of your life, but whatever. Like, he's not going to sell you the property. It's cool, <laughs> but that's awesome for you, honey. And so she's telling me about this guy, and I guess he was like, yeah, I sold. You know, he's like, I sold nine properties last year. Yeah, I mean, like I didn't like sign up for a class. And I'm like, that's why you only sold nine. <laughs> And my wife is like, just shut up and make the damn hamburgers. And I'm like, all right, fine. But that's <laughs> like he's the first guy I've ever really met who figured it out for himself. Legitimately, no help, no outside influence, no nothing. Just went to the courthouse, bought a property at auction, and then sold it, and then figured out how to do it on terms. Right. And eight years later, he sold nine properties. I'm like, you go to flight school, you're selling nine. I mean, you could sell what? What did he sell? Thirty seven thousand a month in the last eighty two minutes. <laughs> That's what flight right. school will do for you. <laughs> Bitter and angry. Bitter and angry, yes. Uh, but you know what? Matt Forbes, it, it brings up a good point because, well, let me just ask you this. Like, you went through flight school three years ago. And, yeah, sure. three years ago. Yeah. yeah. About that. And okay. of the 15 people in that class... How many people do you know are still in it? Three. So three out of 15. So would you say at that time that you were in the top tier of that class? Like you were, if it's a bell curve, were you in the like the 95th percentile? 90th percentile? Um, no. I mean, Scott Todd turned my camera off twice because he thought I fell asleep. <laughs> Have I never told you that? No. no, you tell you tell me that. So when I get like when I'm when I'm very serious, <laughs> I don't crack jokes, I don't uh, make fun of people or myself. I just me intently listen, and I look like, like I'm pissed off. Me like, too. Like, oh, wow, what, what happened to him? I'd be like, shut up, I'm listening. Shut it. Um, and so I was just yeah, I was just sitting there like taking notes, and he turned my camera off. I think he thought I fell I fell asleep. Like, well, don't have flight school at three in the morning, Scott Todd, but whatever. <laughs> um, I think it was at nine and I, you know, it was at 9 p.m. Like Eastern then, yeah. Um, but yeah, we had, there was three, I think a group of people quit almost immediately, which I didn't understand. You know, like I get you go to college and, you know, don't learn anything valuable. I get that. I did that. I get it. But I definitely don't understand dropping whatever I dropped on flight school to then not stick with it. I mean, that didn't make any sense. And then, of course, I didn't do anything for six months afterwards. But let's pretend that didn't happen. Right. But <laughs> yeah, I mean, there are three. One of them. And what's interesting is one of them. I'm not sure where he's at. To be fair. But the other one, um, Jim Lala. I talked to Jim all the time. And right when I had that huge spurt, he called me. He's like, what the hell? He's like, what happened to you? And I'm like, Jim, here's the deal, dude. Come on, settle down. I got lucky. But I was like, where are you at in your business? And we had this great conversation. And um, we were about even. If you take yeah. out the, the, the nonsense, you know, that month, if you took that month out, we were about even. And I was like, hey, we're like, and he's like, it's just not that easy. He's like, nothing comes easy for me. And I'm like, yeah, well, you do all the work yourself because you're an idiot and you make all the money. I outsource all the stuff, so I make way less money. And here we are. And we're like, oh, <laughs> so lovingly, too. <laughs> you're so... Well, you know, it's you're exactly so... what I said. And I love Jim. Like, he's a great guy, right? Lala, come on. Lala. 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 Uh, 
<laughs> but yeah, I mean, at this point, he's got to be over, you know, he's got to be over 10, you know, 10, 12, maybe 13 or 14 at this point. And he's probably getting ready to quit his job, would be my guess. I mean, that's, yeah. that, I mean, what else, what other job are you going to go get where you quit, where you quit forever? Like somebody tell me that job because right. that ain't happening. Right. So, yeah, I'm surprised that people quit right away. But that was, as I say this all the time. The reason I love this business is when I did all the research, everybody says the same thing. Yes, it works, but it was too hard for me. It didn't work for me. Mm-hmm. And you're like, oh, oh, it didn't work for you. Is that what happened? OK, so you tried. You bought a property. Then you sold it. You made like a buttload of money on it. And then it's not for you. OK, go sell some ATMs. That sounds great. Get out of my way. Give me the, the... Sell property to me on wholesale and move on. <laughs> yes. Give me the niche where it works 100% of the time and it's super boring and takes a while to figure out so most people quit. Give me that in whatever industry it is. I'm in. I'll do it all day. I'll outlast you. I'm not the best looking. I'm not the smartest, but I will just not quit. 